Hello there. I'm pretty sure you would have heard the term API and if you were wondering what it is, then this is the video for you. Understanding of the technology concepts is a huge plus for a business analyst role and also gives you an edge during the hiring process. There are lots of good tech videos on YouTube for APIs, but in this video, we will cover from a non-technical perspective for easy understanding. You will learn what an API is and we will use a simple case study as always to go over the concepts. We have a lot of requests to go over the tech concepts and this is the first video in that series. If you have not already subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. We have lots to cover. Let's get started. As always, let us consider a simple case study before going into the concepts. Owner of vegan restaurant called Vegan Gardens is looking for an online home delivery service for her restaurant. They want their customers to be able to create, view, update or delete their home delivery orders. They also want these functionalities to be performed by their customers either using the restaurant's website or the mobile app. In addition, they want the same functionalities to be available for the customers using partner or the aggregator applications and websites. Sounds complex? Let us see how this complex requirement becomes simplified and a consistent behavior is exhibited across all platforms. That is restaurants, website, mobile application or partner or aggregator websites or applications using the APIs. Stay tuned. API is an acronym for Application Programming Interface. Let us take a simple example to understand what an API is. You are planning to watch a movie next week and you prefer XYZ cinemas as you like their seats and service. You log on to XYZ website for online booking of the tickets. You select the date and the movie by using the website's user interface or UI. Once you have entered the required details, you click on submit button and the show timings matching your search criteria would be displayed on the screen for your selection. You are interacting with the XYZ Cinemas application using the screen which is the user interface. But let us say someone is very keen on watching the movie and they don't have a preferred cinema and they are just looking for the nearest option. They would use a movie ticket booking aggregator website and search for the details. The aggregator website is an application which will interact with the individual cinema applications. XYZ Cinemas will be one of the application which the aggregator website will interact with to get all the details. The aggregator website uses an application programming interface or an API to communicate with the XYZ Cinemas application and the requested show timings and other details would be returned to aggregator application which matches the search criteria. In simple terms, API is used for communication between two applications. That's about it. We will dive more into the details in the upcoming slides. Okay, let's get back to our case study. The requirements for Vegan Gardens home delivery service are to enable customers to create, view, update and delete their home delivery order for multiple platforms. Let us create one API for each function. Let's start off with Create Order API. There are three key components of an API. Inputs, Processing Logic and Validations, Output. Let's start off with the input part. For order creation, at a minimum, we would need the customer details, that is their name and address of delivery, order details, that is food items which they want to be delivered and payment mode that is whether the customer has already paid for the order or is it cash on delivery. For the second part of the API, we can have validation for the details in the input and processing logic that is auto generation of the order number and storing the order details to a database. For the third part, the output, 
This API can send the generated order number back to the calling application for reference with the indication of successful order creation. If there is a validation failure or any processing error, then an error message should be sent back to the calling application indicating an error. This is a simple non-technical view of a create API. If any application passes the required inputs, this API will create an order and provide the order details back to the calling application. On the back end, it would use the POST HTTPS method. I won't go into the technical details. You can search further for POST method for further details. Okay, now let's move on to our next functionality, which is viewing of the order details. Once the order has been created, Customer may like to view the order details. Let's create another API for viewing the customer details. As discussed earlier, as part of create API, this API would also have three key components. Inputs, processing logic and the output. Let's start with the input part. For the order details retrieval, at a minimum, we would need the order number. For the second part of the API, that's the processing unit, it will read the order database with the order number provided as a part of the input. If the read is successful, then the order details are returned. If the order number is not found, then an error message would be returned. For the third part, the output, this API would return the order details back to the calling application. If the order details are not found for the provided order number, then an error message would be sent back to the calling application indicating an error. This is a simple non-technical view of a read API. If any application passes the required input, this API will fetch the order details from the database and provide the order details back to the calling application. On the back end, it will use the get HTTPS method. I won't go into the technical details as mentioned earlier. You can search further for get method for the further details. Now let's move on to our next functionality, which is update of the order details. Once the order has been created, customer may like to change their order details or update their delivery address. If the update is within the permissible time, like three hours before delivery, then it would be allowed, else an error message should be thrown. Let's create an API for update of the order details. As discussed earlier, this API would also have three key components inputs, processing logic, and the output. Let's start off with the input part. For order update, at a minimum, we would need the order number and the revised order details or the updated address for delivery. For the second part of the API, that's the processing part, before updating the order in the database, there would be validation. That is, if the time is greater than three hours of the delivery time, then the order details will be updated in the order database and the updated order details will be prepared and delivered. If the time is within the three hours, then an error message will be returned. For the third part, the output. This API would return the successful updated details back to the calling application. If it is not within the permissible time limit, then an error message should be sent back to the calling application indicating an error. This is a simple non-technical view of an update API. On the back end, it would use patch HTTPS method. Okay, now let's move on to our last functionality, which is cancellation of the order. The customer may like to cancel their order. If the cancellation is within the permissible time, like three hours before delivery, then it would be allowed, else an error message should be thrown. Let's create an API for cancellation. As discussed earlier, this API would also have three key components, inputs, processing logic, and the output. Let's start with the input part. For order cancellation, at a minimum, we would need the order number for cancellation. For the second part of the API, that's the processing part, before cancellation of the order in the database, there would be validation. That is, if the time of cancellation is greater than three hours of delivery time, then the order would be marked as cancelled in the order database. If it is within the three hours, then an error message would be returned 
informing that it is not possible to cancel the order. For the third part, the output. This API would return the successful cancellation message back to the calling application. If it is not within the permissible time limit, then an error message would be sent back to the calling application indicating an error. On the back end, it would use the delete HTTPS method. Now we have developed four APIs for create, update, view and delete of the order. Let's go back to our case study requirements. The requirements from the owner of the Wagon Gardens restaurant was to have the home delivery options from multiple platforms. That is from their website, mobile application, aggregator or their partner website. This is where the magic of APIs play out. All these applications can invoke the above developed APIs by passing the required input. Example, the customer can log on to Wagon Gardens restaurant website to create an order which will invoke the create order API. Customer then on the go gets a phone call and they want to add one more item for dinner as they are expecting one more guest. They can log on to their mobile application to view the order which uses read API and can update the order by using update API. Similarly, if some other customer accessing the aggregator website for vegan food and finds the vegan gardens, they can also order using the same APIs. That is the power of the APIs and that is why it is so much used and sought out. Let us say the restaurant wants to provide more flexibility to the customers and they want to reduce the update limit to 2 hours from 3 hours. The changes are required only in the update API logic and once that is redeployed, everything will work seamlessly. Hopefully, we were able to provide an overview on what an API is and how the API works and how it can be used in multiple platforms. Again, as stated, we have not gone into technical details intentionally as we wanted to keep it simple for easy understanding. Did you enjoy the video? If so, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel if you have not already done so. Also, click on the like button to show your support and also help us to share this video with your friends who may find this useful. See you in the next video.